Welcome back to your Sport on 7. Once again, Dubai is attracting the very best this time. Divers. We've just seen a weekend of diving action in Dubai as the FINA Media Diving World Series 2012 made its stop at the Hamdan Bin Rashid Sports Complex. It's a fantastic facility on the bypass road and I went to have a look. The field of divers from 11 different countries included the world's best. With the likes of Tom Daly from Great Britain and China's Kui Bo both competing. I caught up with Canadian diver Jennifer Abiel over the weekend for an insight into a diver's mind during tournaments like this. A weekend that has attracted the most world champions in one sport ever gathered in Dubai. Jennifer was keen to take me to her office a few metres above the water. OK, so we come out, you walk out, you see the thousands of fans uh, waiting uh, to see what you can do in the, uh, in the dive. How do you feel at this point as you walk out? Uh, you feel nervous at what point because you know that you're going to be uh, diving and do your dive. And, but you just have to calm yourself and uh, have confidence on what you do. And obviously, like the weekend we've just had, it's been an event full of the world's best divers. It must be nice to be performing with the likes of the world's best divers around the world. It's always nice and also it, show, it shows where you're, you are on your road to be uh, the best diver in the world. Jennifer may be regarded as an old pro in the diving world, being at the age of 20, but she was only 16 when she made her first Olympic appearance in Beijing. Still with hopes of getting to London this summer, events like this come in handy to judge where you are with your form. I know you've had a few days to enjoy the sights of Dubai. Have you seen any camels and the Burj Khalifa, the big tower? Have you managed to see all of that? Of course we did. Um, we did camel tours and sun duning stuff too. And also we went to the water park, so it was really great. <laughs> I bet you were showing off at the water park as well, because you know how to handle water. Exactly. <laughs> she certainly does know how to handle water. 2010 saw gold at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi in the three-metre springboard synchronised and silver in the three-metre springboard. Last year saw a bronze during the 2011 FINA World Series and a bronze and a silver at the World Championships in Shanghai. Now let's talk about diving, obviously a big weekend in Dubai. How did you get into diving? How is it something, I know a lot of gymnastics then move into diving, but how did you get into it? Um, I get into diving when I was four years old, so 16 years ago. Uh, I started because my brother was doing diving and I was about to learn how to swim, but I really wanted to do like him. And uh, so I asked my parents to uh, put myself into diving and they did. And since there, there I didn't quit. And to perform diving at the, at, the, at the top level, how long can you go on for? How long is the career in diving? Uh, I think it's up to uh, the person. Maybe you can go until 25, 30. The Canadian sees many years left in her career, hoping to make two more Olympic Games, starting with London this summer. The future looks bright for Jennifer Abiel, and she certainly looks a lot calmer in these surroundings than I do. So we're on the, uh, the five metre board at the moment. It feels a lot higher than it actually is. But at, at this point, Jennifer, when, when, the, when the arena is packed and everybody's watching you and you're at the edge of the board, what's going through your head at this point when you've just got your dive to do? Um, you know, you get a bit concentrated. So you just thinking about what you've got to do and what make a, what's the thing that you have to do to do a good, great dive. It's quite a nerve-wracking experience if I just get the camera to look over the side here. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a fair drop, that is. Um, can you tell as soon as you've lift off from the board if it's going to be a good dive or a bad dive? Well, the divers at my level knows when it's going to be a good dive or bad dive. And they know when they have a good or bad takeoff, they know what to, they got to do to make a good dive at the end. It must be quite a nerve-wracking experience, just obviously here, standing there, and, and the entire arena, it might be full of people, thousands of people watching, but it's silent, yeah. and everyone's watching you. How does that feel? Um, sometimes it feels weird, because you know that there's many people, so you can hear the, when they're like, <coughs> or just <laughs> like whispering, uh, but you, you're in your, in your concentration, you, have, you are in your bubble, kind of, so you don't like, pay attention to them. And, and when you say you're in your bubble, what's going through your mind? Are you counting down to three, two, one before you dive? Or what is it that you're doing in your head before you actually go? Well, I think it depends. All the divers are different. But for me, I just think about what I got to do and then leave. 
Yeah, as soon as I can. <laughs> and I've got to ask, because this is a question that so many people on Twitter have asked me, has it ever gone terribly wrong where you've belly flopped into the water? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts. It hurts a lot. <laughs> Big results in sport then over the last week. Of course, we had diving action in Dubai over the weekend, which saw China dominate, uh, getting gold in all classes. Mexico picked up a couple of silvers, but never really threatened Team China. Tom Daly of Great Britain got their only medal with a silver in the 10-metre platform. In rugby, and the Six Nations came to an end on Saturday with Wales securing the Grand Slam, beating France in Cardiff. Scotland failed to get any points on the board as Italy saw them off 13-6 and Stuart Lancaster, the temporary England coach, did no harm in his bid to be made full-time coach as his side saw off Ireland 39. So this is how Wales claimed their third Grand Slam in eight years, finishing two points ahead of the impressive England. Ireland and France together on five, and there we can see at the bottom Scotland having lost all five matches. And in tennis, Roger Federer continued his great start to 2012, claiming victory at the ATP 1000 Indian Wells tournament. That's two successive tournament wins for the Swiss, who of course won in Dubai just a few weeks ago. Federer saw off Eisner in two sets, 7-6, 6-3. And on Sunday, we saw the beginning of the 2012 Formula One season. It's set to be a very competitive season as the leading teams look to be closer together. McLaren started with a victory as Jensen Button led from the first corner to secure his 13th career win. Vettel did well to get second after starting on the third row of the grid. And Lewis Hamilton, disappointed after getting overtaken by his teammate Button off the grid, finished in that last podium spot. A very busy seven days in sport then. We've seen Justin Rose win in Miami, the best divers in Dubai, Ireland looking ahead in cricket, and F1 back in action in Melbourne as well. Looking forward to the next seven days already. See you next Monday at 8 o'clock on Sport on 7. In the meantime, you can get me on Twitter, Tom Bushell, UAE. Good night.